Hello and welcome to this brief collector's guide to Stephen King manuscripts, galleys, proofs and ARCs. The market for Stephen King collectibles is thriving worldwide. One niche within King collecting is usually referred to as pre-publication, physical incarnations of his texts that predate the first official publication, produced either by King or by his publishers. They can take many forms, from an original idea notebook, handwritten by King, to a review copy that is identical to the first edition book, except for a publisher's sticker or stamp and the letter from the editor that came with it. A first category of pre-publication documents is manuscripts. Here are a few examples of items that on occasion come up for sale in King Collector's circles that are described as manuscripts. The Misery Book of the Month Club manuscript, the Tommyknockers Book of the Month Club manuscript, the Bag of Bones Second Draft manuscript, the Under the Dome Three Volume manuscript, the Black House Bound Partial and Full manuscripts, the Desperation Two Volume manuscript, the Regulators manuscript, the Sleeping Beauties manuscript, and the Dreamcatcher manuscript. In the strictest sense of the word, none of these are manuscripts. In the strictest sense, a manuscript is a document that contains a handwritten version of a text, as opposed to a typescript, a text produced with a typewriter, or a printout, a document where the text on the pages was printed from an electronic source file. However, collectors, publishers and authors most often use the term manuscript broadly to mean a version of the text that came direct from the author, unedited, not yet set in type by a printer and not yet properly bound into a book. When discussing manuscripts and typescripts, it's important to distinguish between originals and copies. An original is one of a kind, there is no second document that is exactly like it, and it came directly from King's hand. Most of King's original manuscripts and typescripts are in his personal archive where they belong. King usually writes at least two drafts of a novel, sending a polished up version of his second draft to his publisher. He has always preferred typing to writing by hand. When he's away from his typewriter, traveling for instance, he will continue what he's working on by hand in a notebook or on a yellow legal pad, text that he'll then type up when he gets home. There are only a few novels of which he wrote the entire first draft by hand. Cujo, Bag of Bones and Dreamcatcher are examples. King first went digital in early 1982, buying a Wang System 5 personal computer and a Diablo printer. So, before 82, most of the originals produced by King were typescripts, but also a few notebooks and loose pages, and from 1982 onwards the typescripts are more and more replaced by printouts. Occasionally, King has given away original manuscript pages, or donated notebooks to be auctioned for a good cause. These three yellow legal pad pages, for instance. They contain an episode from Eyes of the Dragon. Once he typed them up, King had no more use for them and sent them to an acquaintance, the editor of a magazine who had asked King for some handwritten copy for his private collection. This article in the Castle Rock newsletter mentions that an idea notebook was auctioned off in 1986 for charity, with Harlan Ellison as the auctioneer. The article describes it as a small notebook King carried around with him when he was away from his typewriter containing 89 pages of handwritten King drafts and it sold for $5,200. In it were parts of a novella called Doors and fragments of what became The Drawing of the Three. Moving on now to printouts. The problem with them is that if they don't have any handwriting on them, they can no longer materially be distinguished from photocopies. So here the label of original becomes more problematic. If King made changes to the text by hand on a printout, then it automatically becomes an original. But if the pages are unmarked, provenance becomes key. What is the backstory of the stack of pages? The evidence usually takes the form of a to whom it may concern letter from the person who received the printout or photocopy. The letter will tell you where it came from, from King, his agent or his publisher, and what it was used for. Most of the original typescripts and printouts that are in private hands are of short stories or non-fiction pieces that were submitted for publication to magazines or anthologies. After the document has done its job, be it copy edited, marked up and used for typesetting, it is filed and eventually makes its way onto the collector's market. An example is Lunch at the Gotham Café, a short story that first appeared in 1996 in an anthology titled Dark Love, edited by Nancy A. Collins. 
King wrote the story on his computer, printed it out, sent it to his agent at the time, Chuck Farrell, who put his agency's stamp on the first page and sent it on to Collins. It was accepted and a copy editor and the designer added instructions in green and pink on how the text needed to be typeset. The letter of provenance states that this document was purchased directly from Nancy A. Collins and it's described as King's original manuscript. It's unlikely that there are any original handwritten edits by King on this document, however, and very likely that King printed more than one copy and that his agent made extras as well. But it is still original in the sense that there is only one document that was submitted for the anthology Dark Love and it has the colorful markup and the provenance letter to prove it. In the beginning I listed a number of manuscripts of novels, all photocopies of course. Making copies is an indispensable part of the writing and publication process of King's novels. A limited number of copies are made at various moments in the process to serve a specific purpose. Most of the manuscripts on that list were made by the publisher to be used in-house. When King submits a new novel to his publisher, many people across many departments need to spring into action. The editorial department gets cracking on the text. The art department needs to send a copy to the artist that will make the cover art. The sales department, the marketing department and so on, they all need access to the text to do their job properly. So a very limited number of copies is made by the reproduction department, usually comb bound or glued. Most often the exact number of copies that were made isn't known. The manuscripts of Under the Dome, Sleeping Beauties, The Stand, Complete and Uncut, it, Desperation, The Regulators, Duma Key and Bag of Bones all fall into this category. The big Bag of Bones tome came with a letter from Scribner Editor-in-Chief Nan Graham to her co-workers. We count on you to inspire at least one person in each of your accounts, who then convert the rest of the staff. It's time to read Stephen King. Another area of bookmaking where manuscript photocopies are used is the sale of rights. First English publication rights, translation rights, book club rights, screen adaptation rights, and so on. Examples of these are The Tommyknockers and Misery. Both were submitted to the Book of the Month Club and have a red stamp on the cover to prove it. Collectors believe there to be 12 such copies made of Misery, but who knows, really? Interestingly, The Tommyknockers is a copy of King's second draft of the novel, before he had gone through the text one last time to do his polish, so there is stuff in that version that's not in the published book. With Misery, the Book of the Month Club actually received copies of King's first draft. Later, another set of photocopies was made to sell the screen adaptation rights, one of which is pictured here, and the movie rights copies are of a more finished version of the text of Misery, Copies of the printout that King submitted to the publisher Viking, which was making its way through the editing process because it contains copy editor's markup. Yet another category of King manuscript copies are association copies. In On Writing, King describes his habit of, after he's just finished the first draft of a new work, making half a dozen copies for close friends. They are his trusted first readers, his wife Tabitha being first among the first. These association copies are typically just unbound stacks of paper, so here the need for providence comes into the picture again. At the moment I don't know of any examples of first reader copies in collectors' hands. King would also send copies to friends, not for proofreading but as gifts. Occasionally these people will sell them on. In 2017, eight such copies were auctioned for charity. They belonged to David Morell, the author of First Blood. King and Morell were close throughout the 80s and 90s, and King sent him copies of It, Misery, The Dark Half, Four Past Midnight, Needful Things, The Moving Finger, Dedication, and The Night Flyer. King sent this copy of a printout of Lysi's story to one of the doctors who treated King after his accident in June of 1999. What pre-publication collectors refer to as the manuscripts of Dreamcatcher, Hearts in Atlantis and The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon are the items on the list that are the furthest away from any definition of a manuscript. The first page of the Dreamcatcher manuscript reads, The attached manuscript is for review by Scribner's sales reps and accounts only. Please do not make or distribute unnecessary copies. But the text inside has clearly been typeset. It's an exact match with the first edition and contains streamlines. Even though the publisher still calls this in-house document a manuscript, it's clearly a bound copy of a proof produced by a printer, which is the next phase of the publication process. 
Click here to watch the second part of this guide, which deals with proofs, galleys, and ARCs.